My name is Sada. I want to uh, marry your wife. Uh, Brother Sada, uh, can you hear me? Brother Sada? Yes. Okay, Lord Jesus willing, in a future session, we've discussed this in the past, Muhammad's moral teaching. Lord Jesus willing, in a future session, we'll talk about Paul's moral life, his morality, his moral teaching, and contrast that to Muhammad. Here you're questioning Muhammad's morality. Lord willing, we can discuss that another time, and we will, if the Lord wills. But however, tonight's topic, and I want to be fair, because I don't want the Muslims to think that we're just allowing Christians to talk about anything. To be fair to Muslims and Christians, the topic is Islamic monotheism. Do Muslims worship only one God? Does the Quran endorse only one God? So if you have a question about whether the Quran or Islam promotes only one God, please ask me or make a comment. But as far as Muhammad's moral teaching, we can't cover it tonight. We're going to have to cover it another night in the future, Lord willing. Do you have a question about Islam, Tawheed, monotheism? Okay. If we have a, uh, okay. If we have a same God, yeah. uh, why our God, we, uh, we know our God is Allah, okay? Why the God of Islam say, kill for me? Yeah. You know, that's a little bit is different. Well, we're going to talk about the character of God, Lord willing, in the second program, because the second program has to do with sin and the incarnation. Sin, God's holiness, righteousness, and love, and God becoming flesh in the person of Jesus to save us. So in the second program, we'll address that. Please listen and invite others to listen, and keep us in your prayers, and Lord bless you and watch over you. Uh, thank you, Sada. I'll go now to Yasin. Good evening, Yasin. Yasin, good evening. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I've been watching your program for the last two, three nights. All right. And I said I must call to talk to such intellectual people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in the Quran, we have a surah, surah 114. Okay. I think uh, it will prove very clearly. That's surah 112. Yeah. Uh, this is quite clear. It was revealed to... It's true that God has no son, and if he had a son, why doesn't he have two? And will what? Why does he have one? Three, or why doesn't he have a daughter? Why doesn't he have a Okay, uh, can we answer you? I think you've asked us in the past, and I answered you in the past. Number one, it's not Surah 114, it's Surah 112, Surah Al-Ikhlas, first of all. Secondly, I think you brought this question up in previous programs. We've told you time and time again, God has sons and daughters. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, be he male or if she's a female, becomes a son and daughter of God spiritually, not physically. So God does have daughters and he has sons, not through sex, as your prophet thought, but a spiritual relationship in which God sends his spirit, changes people to try to conform to his image in righteousness, holiness, purity, and love. So our Bible says God has sons and daughters. But I want to know, how come the Quran has a mother? Who's the father of the Quran? The Quran says that it has a mother. Do you know this? No Who? mother and no father. Okay, I'm going to read the Quran to you to show you know you're wrong. The Quran has a mother. Surah 43, verses 3 to 4. 43, verses 3 to 4. So if the Quran has a mother, your Quran says Allah can't have a son unless he has a wife. So then how can the Quran have a mother if it doesn't have a daddy? Surah 43, verses 3 to 4. I'm going to read it to you. It does have a mother, so I want to know who the father is. Okay. And uh, Pastor Joseph, uh, if you turn there, let me know when you're there, because I'm going to have you read uh, in Arabic. Say it again. Okay. Surah 43, verses 3 to 4. When you get there, you let me know. I'm going to read it. All right. Okay. We have made it a Quran in Arabic that you may be able to understand and learn wisdom. We have made it a Quran in Arabic that you may be able to understand and learn wisdom. Now, here's verse 4. Verily, it, the Quran, is in the mother of the book. Mother of the book. The Arabic is Um al Kitab. Can you read Surah 43 4 in Arabic for me, Pastor Joseph? Yeah. So then the Quran has a mother? It's in the mother of the book. So it's in the so if the Quran is in the mother of the book, it has a mother, who's the daddy? Who's the father? were falsified. Your Quran is falsified? Okay. 
Yes, because the Romans, when they... Jesus never preached to the European people. It, it Neither did Muhammad. I just read it in Arabic. Naive. Yeah, he's Europe going off topic. Sure. Neither did Muhammad Allah preach to the European Europe. people. He preached and to the, the Arabs. The Romans, they invented the Trinity. Okay. They invented everything. It's not the same Jesus. Like your prophet yeah. invented false teachings. Do what does that prove? Do, do, do you see how he instantly yeah. changes the subject? Just follow the progression yeah. of events here. One, he says, well, if God has a son, why doesn't he have a daughter? Uh, well, first of all, that's based on a complete misunderstanding of what we mean based on the Quran. Muslims get their misunderstanding of our beliefs from the Quran, and then they tack us based on their own misunderstandings. As if when we say Jesus is the Son of God, we mean that God produced an offspring, and if he produced an offspring who's a son, why didn't God produce an offspring who is a daughter? That's not what we believe at all. Jesus is uh, is part of the being of God. Exactly. There is, he's, he's, so we're, we're not saying God produce an offspring at all. However, if you're talking about sons and daughters, uh, people that God adopts as, uh, as children, then yes, God does have sons and daughters in, in a spiritual sense. Right. So God does have sons and daughters. So uh, our friend should have been refuted at that point. However, Sam went to the Quran and says that according to the Quran, the Quran has a mother, according to the Quran. Now, what should this person have done? He should have said, wow, I'm accusing the Christians of being absurd based on my own misunderstanding. Now, based on what I've said, I have to condemn my own book. But he doesn't do that, and he says, ah, but Christianity was corrupted by the Europeans. Do you, yeah, do you see subject, this? Yeah. Why can a Muslim not stay on a topic and follow a logical progression? And if he makes a mistake and a horrible blunder because his Quran completely misrepresents the belief of other people, why can't he say... I'm sorry, guys. You're right. I accused you of something. It obviously misrepresents your belief. I'm sorry. You know, I grew up as a Muslim. I believe in the Quran. It completely distorts what you believe, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, you know, I'll call back when I've actually investigated what you believe. Why can't a Muslim do that? Why is that so exactly. impossible? It's just you have to keep attacking us based on your own misunderstandings, uh, misrepresentations, distortions. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do here. It's, it's and shocking. I want to just uh, add. Uh, some points by the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. Muhammad knew what the Christians meant when they said Jesus son of God. He knew they didn't mean that God had sex with a woman, got her pregnant, and Jesus was the result. However, he rejected it on the grounds that the only way someone can have a son is if that person has a wife with whom he has sex. So notice the logic of Muhammad. No, Jesus can't be a son unless God has a wife and he has sex with. Since God doesn't have a wife and he doesn't have sex, Jesus can't be a son. So the logic is, this is the only way you can have a son. Now, if Muhammad is consistent and the Muslims are consistent, the Quran has a mother. But remember the logic, right? You cannot have offspring unless you have a consort. You cannot have an offspring unless you have a consort. Since the Quran is in the mother of the book, it didn't say the Quran is the mother of the book. It is in the mother of the book. That means the Quran has a mother. Well, the mother can't have offspring unless it has a spouse. But wait, here's the problem. Muslims tell us the Quran is the word of Allah. The Quran is the word of Allah. So that means Allah is the source of the Quran. But if the Quran has a mother, and yet the Quran is the word of Allah, that means Allah does have a wife, the mother of the Quran. And Allah and the mother produce the Quran. That's if we adopt Muhammad's logic. So according to the logic of Muhammad, Allah has a wife. And through this wife, he produced the Quran. Why? Quran is the word.